this that was part of the submittal that the commission looked at on September 25th, but there are certain locations that interim in-stream flow standards were amended. So like this is one of four, there's um, site A and site B. Uh, and they set uh, interim in-stream flow standard. What that means is at this point, we want a certain volume in the stream, either cubic feet per second or million gallons per day. And um, that's what um, we'd like to be met. To go out and take flow measurements, again, as some of you may have seen today, is um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, what we're hoping to do is create gauges where we can equate flow to a certain height. So anybody can go, any one of you could, if you knew where the location is, go look and see where the, the water level is in the stream. If it's below the line, let us know, take pictures, whatever, you know. We, we're really working at, want to work with the community to partner because all of our staff, unfortunately, is based in Oahu. Um, you know, it costs money to put somebody on the plane just to say, oh yeah, the water is above the line or below the line. So that's where really the community comes in. We really appreciate your, your uh, help. So um, maybe if I could explain what we did today would be helpful. Uh, we went out to um, Konopo and we tried to identify location A. When the commission made the decision, we knew we wanted to have it below the hyper gauge and above any of the um, tarot and domestic <coughs> users' diversions. So um, we went out, and, and that's where USGS expertise came, came in. Because there are certain areas of the stream where it's not the best location to take a measurement. And they were help, um, able to help us identify locations where we're good, and we put a reference point uh, in the stream. So today we took measurements um, uh, the Honopo area, right mouth of the bridge that crosses, I, I don't know if the bridge has a name, or the, the bridge with the sign that says don't drive over when there's high water, that bridge. <laughs> and so we established uh, uh, what we're calling a pre-restoration measurement, and we selected that site. We went down below what we felt was the lowest um, diversion, below that and above the confluence of Honopo and Puniaba Street. And we established a site there also. And then in, uh, after that, in, uh, after lunch, we went to the uh, Puello um, area, and we took a measurement and tried to establish a site for this um, uh, IFSA point. Uh, as those of you who are out there with us today, it was a little bit harder than these two because it didn't have the solid type bedrock channels where we could drill a boat and stuff, a lot of you know, mud, soil. So we, we weren't able to um, set a reference point in the stream bank. So it's going to be a little bit challenging on that one. But we, we want to go back and take more pre-restoration flow measurements and do post-restoration flow measurements. Um, before I move on, did anybody have any questions? <coughs> yes, we did, and I'm not sure if we finished calculating it. Um, it and my understanding, it's been pretty dry. Um, I think Ernie was giving me some, some figures on, on your rain gauges and stuff. Commission that you guys have. Understand Hawaii law. Yes, one member of the commission, as per the statute, has to have um, 
Hawaiian uh, experience and um, dealing with traditional cultural practices. The one who's actually on the commission is both an uh, MD and an uh, attorney um, that represents that, that slot. Why did it take so long for, for this to come up? Uh, really, I'm not sure. I've been here for one year. For one year, when I came on board, we only had one person in that section. We were able to triple our staff. They worked very hard in this past year. I'm not sure what happened prior to me coming on board, but we're here tonight because we want to move forward and implement what, what the commission decided upon. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and talking about implementation, uh, part of the submittal that was decided by the commission on September 24th and 25th <coughs> is what we call adapt, adaptive management. And it involves implementing those numbers. It involves monitoring, measuring, seeing if we are complying with those numbers. And it involves evaluation, looking at the data, what can be done. And it also involves other things than just flow measurement. City folks, uh, Division of Aquatic Resources, went out last week for, what was it, three days? Three days. And they established points in the stream <coughs> where they want to um, go back and continue to monitor, monitor for uh, the biology or the animals in the stream. So uh, again, <coughs> they want to take pre-release monitoring and post-release, see if, if the population of the the animals are increasing, the diversity, all that kind of all that kind of stuff um, regarding the aquatic resources. Uh, tonight was really to inform you folks about the short-term <coughs> changes and then the longer-term changes. And what I mean by that, uh, what I mean by that is that there are certain things that EMI wanted to do right away to get water downstream so we can try and meet the numbers that the commission decided upon. Did you find the owner? Is that what we did? Well, they have divergence one mouth house. One mouth house. So um, there's also divergence, you know, chiral divergence, domestic divergence. So there, there are multiple, multiple people who registered with the commission back in 1988, the registration, um, some of the longer term changes require permits when you do construction in the stream. I'm not sure if any of you guys had to go through that when you did any kind of uh, uh, construction or diverging structure in the stream. That may involve the Army Corps of Engineers, may involve the Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands, and various other government type agencies. And my understanding is... So what well, I'm going to be that these streams belong to the, to the agencies. That gives you the impression that they have an interest in the stream. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. For example, the Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands <coughs> regulates conservation lands. It may be publicly owned, it may be privately owned, but they still in enforce the con conservation statutes. So they don't, I mean, a private owner doesn't own it, basically. If someone has regulation over it, they Well, it's kind of like if. You know, I want to build a house on my property. I still got to follow the county building, building permit laws. You know, I believe there's both statutes making the world path exclusively. Uh, okay, I'm not familiar 